On page 544 of the book, you will find comments on Say's Law. In his assessment of Say's Law, Keynes lumps Austrians and monetarists together when there is really no connection between them. Keynes criticizes Say's Law, which states that supply creates its own demand. Still, as we have already seen, Hayek and other Austrian economists had explained much earlier that the supply offered by the productive structure often does not coincide with the desires and demands of consumers, and this occurs precisely when the structure has been distorted by the process of credit expansion. This is the essence of the whole theory of the cycle, and everything capital theory explains. But, since Keynes was unfamiliar with it, he oversimplifies and lumps everyone together. As for Keynes's arguments concerning credit expansion, they are a joke. He claims there is nothing wrong with credit expansion. His first argument holds that the creditor and debtor positions cancel each other out, that what some people owe is what others are owed, and that therefore the two positions cancel each other out and have no economic effects. Second, he argues that when one receives a loan, if one does not spend the money on consumer goods, it is as if one had saved it. That is, according to Keynes, the higher the inflation, the greater the savings. What nonsense! If I receive a loan and I immediately use the money to buy capital goods or hire workers, once the money reaches their pockets, those workers and owners of capital goods consume. We must ask whether the social saving rate has risen or not. Third, Keynes thinks, well, my first two arguments are absurd, it is true, but if I manage to increase national income with my multiplier, there will ultimately be more income, and that will mean more saving. Listen, only if all of the newly created money injected into the system via credit expansion, the shaded part we saw in the productive structure, only if economic agents save the totality of the money newly created from nothing by the banking system, can the productive structure be considered sustainable in the long term if part of that money is spent on consumption. And, in fact, we have already seen that all the incentives point in that direction, because during the boom and the bubble, we think we are richer, and everyone says, Imagine that! My neighbour just sold an apartment like mine for two million euros! I am a millionaire! I am going to the Caribbean! Listen, you are not a millionaire, nor are you any richer than you were before. You have the same. What the apartment yields are the services it provides, a place to live, a home, and those have not increased. If you go off to the Caribbean, you are consuming your capital and impoverishing yourself. In the end, not only is all the money created by credit expansion not saved, but much more consumption is actually stimulated. And if any part of what is injected is not saved, that is enough to trigger all of the six micro microeconomic effects we have already analysed. These pop the bubble, give predominance to the true desires of consumers, and spark off a financial crisis and an economic recession. Please also read about the concept of the marginal efficiency of capital. According to Keynes, this is the rate at which the historical cost of a capital good is equal to its future flow of returns. Note that Keynes is still anchored in the pre-scientific stage of economics, when it was thought that costs determined prices, and not the other way around. In other words, you build a capital good, and what it has cost you is already part of the price. It is fixed, and it is what determines the price of the capital good. No way! The market price of a capital good tends to equal the value of its future flow of returns, discounted by the interest rate. We have already seen that the value of an apartment which yields €10,000 a year at an interest rate of 5%, assuming it does not depreciate, is always equal to the annual rent divided by the interest rate. We looked at the formula. So, if the interest rate goes down, the present value of the apartment goes up, regardless of its cost. And that is precisely what guides on entrepreneurs on where they should invest. If people decide to save more, and the interest rate falls, the value of capital goods multiplies. And since it costs little to produce them, we all embark on the production of capital goods, and we demand factors of production to build houses, for instance. And as we saw, one of the effects of genuine saving is that it leads to healthy and sustainable investment. Yet, we also saw that if the drop in the interest rate is caused not by genuine saving, but by mere credit expansion, entrepreneurs act in the same way. That is, they rush to invest in capital goods, which appear to them to be very profitable. But later, they inevitably discover that nobody wants, for example, the one million 
apartments they have built in Spain. Interest rates fell, not because saving increased, but because the central bank reduced them to zero or even negative real rates. Entrepreneurs do not know if loans come from genuine saving or credit expansion. They rush to invest, and like machinery, they are very efficient, and they build one million apartments that we later discover nobody wants. Nobody ever wanted them, but the workers are already there, and the companies, etc. And so we find ourselves in a serious predicament. We must reorganize and transfer workers to more viable lines of production, absorb those apartments, etc. So, notice that Keynes is still rooted in the pre-scientific stage of economics, prior to the subjectivist revolution. In the pre-scientific stage, costs were thought to determine prices, and not the other way around. Perhaps it is Keynes' definition of the marginal efficiency of capital which best reflects this scientific error. And as for his criticism of Mises and Hayek, it really is laughable, because Keynes completely misinterprets the words of Mises and Hayek. Robertson himself even wrote Keynes a letter. He wrote, Listen, Keynes, you are saying just the opposite of what Mises and Hayek say. And Keynes answered him, You are right, Robertson. In my next work, I will acknowledge it. And do you know what? He never did. <laughs>